The cookie cutter shark is the ultimate prankster of the ocean. They swim around looking all cute and tiny and innocent, and then before you know it, an entire chunk of your flesh is scooped out like a melon baller. <sighs> Classic. But what is a cookie cutter shark? Can a shark be a parasite? And if cookie cutter sharks could talk, would they sound like this? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the tree of life. Cookie cutter sharks are a species of dogfish in the family Dalatiidae, better known as the kite fin sharks. This name originates from the barbaric practice of children in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, tying these animals to pieces of string and then flying them around on the beach with their family. Actually, that might have been a dream I had. The family Dalatiidae includes 10 species of small to medium sized sharks found in deep sea and midwater habitats worldwide. The largest species is the kite fin shark, who the family is named for. This species has a maximum size record of just under 6 feet long, while the smallest, the small eye pygmy shark, tops out at around 9 inches, making them one of the smallest sharks alive today. And then there's this guy. <laughs> Come on, man. The pocket shark, and its close cousin the American pocket shark, are only known from a single specimen each so their biology and behavior are entirely unknown. Itty bitty sperm whale looking punk. One thing that all species of kite fin shark have in common is an extreme case of dignathic heterodonty. This means that the teeth on their upper jaw look very different from the teeth on their lower jaw. And no kite fin shark exemplifies this trait more cartoonishly than the cookie cutter shark. Cookie cutter sharks, the two members of the genus Isisteus, have small, needle-like upper teeth and giant, triangular lower teeth. Adding to the aesthetic, the teeth poke out from behind a set of lips that would make a Kardashian jealous. Like all sharks and rays, cookie-cutter sharks regularly shed and replace their teeth throughout their lifetime. Unlike other sharks, their entire bottom row of teeth are interlocked and shed as one single unit, and then swallowed to recycle calcium. Ouch! As you may have guessed by now, the cookie cutter shark didn't get its name from an affinity for baked goods. In fact, they probably think that cookies are gross. Instead, the cookie cutter shark gets its name from the cookie cutter shaped craters that they leave in the skin of their prey. Normally, these bites don't result in a victim's death, but they're absolutely a huge bummer. This feeding behavior qualifies them as ectoparasites. Parasites that feed on the outside of a host's body. What a flea is to a dog, a cookie cutter shark is to a whale. Cookie cutters have been recorded taking chunks out of large fish, whales, porpoises, seals, other sharks, and yes, occasionally, humans. But somehow it gets even weirder. In the 70s and 80s, Several U.S. Navy nuclear submarines were forced back to base after malfunctions caused by damage to the sonar domes and electrical cables. The culprit? You could probably guess because you're watching a video about cookie cutter sharks. It was cookie cutter sharks. The problem was easily solved by covering the exposed rubber and neoprene with a layer of fiberglass. But for a minute there, the U.S. Navy believed that there was an unknown enemy weapon taking bite-sized chunks out of their subs. Loose lips may sink ships, but these lips almost caused an international incident. Last, but certainly not least, we're going to take a look at an aspect of the cookie cutter shark's physiology that doesn't get nearly enough attention. The tummy. Viewed in the daylight, it may not seem all that special. But at night, the cookie cutter's underside glows in the dark. Strange as it seems, bioluminescent sharks are more common than you might imagine. How does this happen? And for that matter, what is the evolutionary benefit of having a glowing belly, other than making you the most popular shark at a rave? We'll find out next week when we meet the extra small masters of luminosity, the lantern sharks. Family at Mopteridae. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, 
leave a comment down below, like, share, subscribe, hit the little tiny bell next to the subscribe button so you get a notification when I upload because I know you guys aren't always getting notified when I upload and that, that's just the best. Follow me on Instagram if you would like and I will see you next week. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving. <laughs>